Right, now that I actually know what I'm doing, look at how easy this is to do carbon fibre. This is my upside down original aluminium part. And I've laid out carbon fibre cloth cut to length. This is 2x2 two two twill. Got my scales, got my cup, zero it out. 85 grams of epoxy, zero it out. 25 grams of the hardener. Gloves on. Get all the sides. Give it a good stir around. 15 degrees in the shed. I'm now going to leave that, let the air bubbles settle a little, and grab a paintbrush. One inch paintbrush. And I'm going to start off with a very thin layer of epoxy coating the surface of the part. You can see I've got release tape over the holes so that I don't end up with epoxy trapping down in the gap in between. Carbon cloth, and I'm going to lay it onto the part. And I'm going to use my brush, pat it down. Adding a bit of epoxy as I go. Try not to be too violent with the first layer of carbon fibre because I don't want to mix up the twill. Working fairly quickly, I've got about a 20 minute life of the epoxy here. 20 minute pot life. So I've got time. Try not to shoot over the sides. Second layer not so important because it's not visible. Got along the edges of where I know the metal is. You notice I haven't added epoxy this time because I've got enough resin soaking through from underneath. Right. And now I'm going to brush a layer on top. Leave that somewhere to dry, or cure. Leave it somewhere to cure. On top of the beer seems as good a place as any. Forty-eight hours later. Forty-eight hours of curing time later, and here is my carbon fiber thing on an aluminium template. Again, there's the uh, there's the tape on the back which stops it leaking through. Let's crack this open in an appropriate manner, and we'll see what we've got. Right. Carbon fibre strands out the way, or filaments. Um, I just need to get... Well, actually, I should be able to just lever it off. Yeah, there you go. Separate nicely. We'll just work around the edges. Pop that off. And The stickiest point is where this tape is, because there's a little indentation on the other side. Let's crack that off. I'm going to use a stick behind this part. One very lightweight carbon fibre radiator panel. I will cut out the uh, the holes and the excess around the outsides and then let's see what we've got at the end here. It's super light. I don't think it's going to be... It's more flexible than the, um, uh, than the aluminium one, of course, because I use the same direction of cloth. I think if I was doing it again, I would do a third layer and 
have it crossed over. So this is two that are two two uh, layers of of two layers of carbon fibre which are going in the same direction. I think next time I would add a third layer which is at uh, it's perpendicular, the opposite of parallel. So I'll just I'll uh, cut this out and then let's uh, see what we're working with. There we have one carbon fibre trim piece for the radiator panel. Now it's going to need some polishing. If you get right in there, you can see it's got some it's got some textural difficulties, but you saw how easy that was once you know what you're doing. Now this is very flexible, right? This is. Um, it's not, it, it's, this is the thing, carbon fibre is strong in a particular direction, so this is strong in the folding direction, and probably I needed it strong in that direction, so uh, I should figure out which way the orientation goes, and then learn from it, or just, you know, cross it over so that it's got layers like my test pieces from earlier. So that, I mean, drift cut art, that can go straight on, I don't need to fuss about polishing it up a little bit anymore, I just need to cut out the rest of these holes so that it'll go in over the top of the radiator, but that, that is a carbon fibre piece. Look at all the back side of it, the back side of it is manky, but the top side is perfectly serviceable. Well sand, bit of lacquer, polish that up, it'll be shiny as. So there you go, once you know what you're doing, this is actually not that complicated. What I did though is start with some of the more complicated shapes. Um, this is a pretty complicated shape and I'm now gonna sand this one down and make a fiberglass mould to then make carbon fibre parts inside it. So thank you for watching, thank you for coming along on this journey with me as I learn how to do fiberglass and carbon fibre and all the rest. Um, if you have any questions, comments, likes, stick them in the boxes down below. Thank you very much for watching, make good choices, look after each other, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.